Good morning, everyone. So from bone to satellite, you will understand the title a little bit later on. Um, for this presentation, I wanted to discuss a little bit about the Internet of Things, and there are a lot of presentations if you go on the TED website already today, showing you very nice devices such as talking fridges and things like that. And I didn't want to go again through that. I, I, through, through the work I have, um, we are lucky because we face uh, on an everyday basis people who have inventions, who are designers, creative people, and, and we tell them, well, you should connect your objects on the Internet. And so the presentation I want to do is like, you are all inventors and designers and engineers, and tomorrow you will come up with these great new ideas. And I want to highlight to you the f a few things you need to know before connecting your inventions to the Internet. That's the sense of the presentation. Right, you, you all know this movie scene from 2001 Space Odyssey, and uh, this is why I don't shave, actually. They are, they, these apes, they are my heroes. Um, this movie shows two things. Uh, the first thing is, it shows that you can see our history of human beings as the history of the objects that we live with. So these, from these first apes that had bones they were using to hit their neighbors to survive, to this satellite, which is thrown somewhere in far away in outer space, well, we can, we can resume our history with the objects we've been living with. That's an interesting point, I think. The second point is we are in the verge of, of, of major changes in the way we design and in the way we engineer the objects because we can connect them. And I think connecting an object and, and connecting it to the Internet and sending it away is a little bit like throwing a bone and, and making it accessible to the whole universe. So, of course, from the bone to get to the satellite, there have been a few inventions, and I don't want to go through the history of these objects. I mean, that you have the wheel in there, the press, the plane, the computer, there are many others. Uh, but, but what I wanted to highlight is, um, firstly, how we, we interact with these objects and how we've interacted th through time. So, if you go back to the, to the Neolithic, people were doing bartering. So, I would be a specialist in weapon making. I would exchange my knowledge and my, my, my bones with the, next, the guy next door who was making pottery, and we would survive like that. Um, the specialization allowed, allowed us to get to a, a step where, well, trade started to, to, to be brought between villages, and then money was invented. And this, this changed the relationship we have with objects because you could buy something and then travel a little bit and sell it away. And so, so the reach of the objects went, um, went further. And then, Another big, big change in the, um, in the relationship we've had is, is advertising, because this kind of dematerialized the object and its rep representation. So that was in the 18th century at the time of the Industrial Revolution, where the number of, of objects produced were much bigger than before. You had to kind of differentiate yourself from what, was, from what is done by, by the guy next door. This is how brands were created as well. And so if you look at the trends, you can see some interesting things in there. First of all, the number of objects produced is, is, is raising all the time. I mean, from, from the few bones uh, a million years ago to, to where we are now, we are in a consumption, consumption culture where we just buy things, throw them away. So the number of objects uh, increase. The number of inventions also increase. So every year, I think there's like 15 to 20 percent more patents than the year before. So we are all inventors and inventing new things in a much faster way than we were before. Another point is reach. Whereas uh, 200 years ago, you would produce something very local. Today, you invent something, you design it, you put it on the market, it goes anywhere. You have no idea where it goes. It could go to China, South Africa. You don't know. And then there's the web. So what happens there? Well, definition of an object is something that is tangible within the grasp of our senses. It's very generic. And the point I'm making is, this is a bottle of wine, because wine is one of my passions. 
um, some might recognize the wine as well. Um, you have this bottle of wine, you, you have a perception of it, you know what it's, it's for, <laughs> you have a good idea at least. And then all of a sudden you connect it, and then you access new information. And so with a smartphone, you can get information from the producer of the wine who will tell you, well, don't drink it today, wait for three years before drinking it because it's not ready. Or maybe then two weeks after that, he'll tell you, no, you have to drink it now, it's much better. So overall, because you can have access to different information, to different view of the object, you're actually touching what the object is in itself. So that's why I believe we are in, in, in front of a lot of new things which will be very revolutionary. It's because we are touching the essence of what an object is. So I, I highlighted six things, six ideas, six, six points to consider when you are inventing something that you want to connect. The first point is identification. So you recognize here a very famous Belgian painting by Magritte, who was done in, uh, in the 1950s, called Ceci n'est pas une pomme. The point I'm making with this painting is that he, when he created it in the 1950s, it was the beginning of TV, the radio, um, news, news. You could, you could advertise very much e in an easier way than you could before. And so he dematerialized the product, which was the apple, and, and, and his, its image. And that, that is, I think, a big change that happened in the 50s. But what we see now is whereas you would receive information which was purely visual, on the internet, you can actually go and buy, buy the apple or buy the painting, which means the relationship is even stronger, and you need to make sure that what you're buying is, uh, is exactly what you think you're buying. In this case, the painting is sold for $4.99. I'm pretty sure it's not the original. Um, so the thing to consider is that the, 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 the good news is objects don't lie. The bad news is they don't speak, so you have to work with that. The second idea is that you have to put the object at the center. What I'm meaning here is brands, designer, engineers, you spend a lot of time inventing new things from research and development, supply chain, selling it, and then what? And so for me, it's like, it's like you, you, you would be a pregnant wife, you spend a lot of time nurturing the baby, and then once he's born, it's going away. Now with the, the connectivity, you can actually get information from what's happening, what's the relationship to the bottle of wine, what people are actually feeling with this object. And so you need to get back the object at the center. And today, if you look at organizations, the way processes are structured, or IT systems, it's, it's just not possible. They are designed around either making money, making an object, producing an object, or selling it, and, and not looking at what the object is and what the relationship of the object is to the, to the owner. I know some of you must recognize this because this is a very geeky product and there must be some geeks around here. It's the Pebble Watch, which was a big success on Kickstarter about a year ago. It's basically an armband with a screen and with an Android operating system on, on top of it. And so on it, you can download applications. So it can do many more things than just giving time. It can give you the speed. You can read your emails, give phone calls. There's an SDK. You can develop the applications. So the point I'm making here is, whereas before you knew a watch would give you time, well, today a watch that gives you time, maybe, but it gives you a lot of other things. And so you have to deconstruct the objects and their function. It's not because you see an object that the function of the ob and the object are tied. Another point I'm making is, uh, and we're in the Socrat, uh, Socrat room here, is uh, Aristote had a definition of, of an object and he said, an object has two functions. It has its own function, typically like a bottle of wine, which is to be, to be drunk. And then it has secondary functions, which are the bottle can be bought, can be traded, can be, can be exchanged, can be destroyed. And these are com common things. All objects have this, these common things. And from an internet perspective and from a, a design perspective, this is very interesting. Because you can basically buy, buy anything, exchange anything, destroy anything. And then you have functions, which there, of course, are more tied to the object. So dissociation of the object and its, and its function is, I think, very important. Cambio, another uh, Belgian example, is um, it's a short-term rental system in Brussels, 
where you go online and you say, I need a car from that time to that time, and they send you the details and the keys um, uh, electronically, and you, can, and you use that to get into the car. Um, it's very interesting because having a car in Brussels is a bit of a pain uh, because of traffic. When you need a car, usually it's to go from a place to another on your own, so you need a small car, but then once a year you go to southern France and you need a larger car. And so the, the product adapts itself to your needs in time. And I think this is a big trend that we will see because as well, becoming owner of something today is much easier than it was before. You know, in, in uh, the Napoleon Code invented the, uh, the notaire system we have in Belgium where you register your house. It's a cumbersome process where, which is absolutely not needed today if you digitalized it, but that's my view. Uh, and today, you would buy something on eBay, you have an invoice, it's a proof of ownership. You sell it again, you, well, someone takes the proof of ownership. So becoming an owner of something is much easier than it was 20 years ago. And so because it's so much easier to become an owner, it's, it's also so much easier not to be the owner. And I think th this logic of wanting to own things, which is very much part of the baby boomers mindset, will evolve towards something of, well, I'm using something, I'm paying for it, and I'm giving it away when I don't need it anymore. People who know me know I'm quite disorganized, so in my pockets I have a lot of stuff. Credit cards, money, my phone, the parking ticket, which is gonna cost me a lot. Um, future is, is much more like only the mobile phone. Uh, technologies exist already today. Uh, you have Google Wallet, you have uh, credit card applications. Everything is going to slowly move into your mobile phone. And so if you think about connect connecting an object to the internet, the chances are you will use your mobile phone to control what is, what's happening and your interactions with it. Um, next point is, and that's my last point, it's gamification. Um, don't underestimate the power of being useless. Uh, if you if you look at um, how people were processing invoices 20 years ago using these old DOS screens, and today they're using ni very nice Windows-based systems, it's actually proven that they were processing more invoices per hour than they are today. Still, systems have evolved and, and no one wants to go back. Why? Because it's more comfortable. That, and so having comfortable interfaces, having comfortable things, is part of the logic and is part of where I believe new products will take us. Um, you see here they're playing PlayStation, who knows, maybe this will be the way of paying invoices uh, in five years' time, it might be as comfortable. Another example about it is um, if you look at the iPhone, don't tell me it's useful. It's very nice, makes your life more enjoyable, and it, but it's certainly not more useful than any, any other phone, that's my view. So, as a takeaway, I would say um, tomorrow's world is going to be very connected. I'm sorry to tell you that. Um, but I think it's exciting because it, it has new rules, new guidance, you need new guidance, but it's also a huge opportunity to bring in many new things that will make our lives more enjoyable, I believe. Thank you.